I'm El Jefe with Capital Chaos. Um, this is Carl from uh, Nile. We're going to ask him some questions. Hopefully, get some good answers. Um, yeah, right? Hopefully. Well, that's our yeah. goal, anyway. <laughs> that's the goal, anyway. <laughs> Who knows what might happen along the way? I know, life. right? Well, that's the fun part, see? Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so, can you give us some just uh, background on the band? Um, when you guys got together, how long you been around? Uh, well, Nile was formed in 1993 um, out of the ashes of another band that I've been playing with, uh, Pete Amora, our original drummer. He and I played together like several bands over the course of 10 years. Um, and so uh, in 93, uh, you know, whatever circumstances it was that led to the demise of that band uh, gave birth to this new thing, which uh, we actually didn't even have a name for. Um, uh, a friend of mine suggested that, hey, you guys like playing that Middle Eastern sounding stuff. Why don't you guys call yourselves Nile? And uh, we thought about it for a few minutes and went, well, well, why not? I mean, I probably would have chosen something a little more, you know, evil sounding. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's, uh, that's the name we ended up with. So uh, we did the same thing that almost every other band always does. We were a local band for years and years and years, playing in like a little three-state area and trying to get people to pay attention to our demo. And uh, yeah, I think in in '96, uh, Craig from Visceral Records uh, uh, decided he was going to put out a record with us. Um, so we went and recorded it, and it was on uh, an embarrassingly low budget, so shoestring that even shoestrings have more budget <laughs> than, than what we had to make that record. But we did it, and it was a blast, and somehow we got it done, and uh, then he went out of business. And we got this phone call one day, and this guy's like, I have bad news and bad news. And, uh, yeah, I'm going out of business, and I've sold your record. To relapse records yeah and then relapse uh they put it on the shelf for six months yeah it was a very depressing time for us actually but uh we were lucky enough john mcintee from incantation gave us a break and let us go out on tour and we, we made like 50 bucks a night for those two tours it was like each one was about a month long um but it was a real learning experience. Um, and our big break came when uh, Incantation was doing a tour with Morbid Angel, and Vader was the other band on that bill. Nice. Vader ran out of tour support, had to go home after two weeks. So John McEntee suggested us. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, Trey, and Steve Tucker liked our record, um, so he decided to give us a chance. So we went out, and it was not even 50 bucks a night. I think we were playing for free on that tour, but we were able to sell enough T-shirts to put gas in our little van to get to each show, so it was all right. Yeah, and uh, that really helped us uh, grow, and we made a lot of contacts, and uh, so big stepping stone. One thing led to another and uh, you know 20 years later uh, we got seven albums out and uh, yeah we're pretty happy we're, we're playing our music and there you go 20 years that's what this tour is all about it's our 20 year anniversary. That's very cool that's very cool. Um, <clears throat> so That brings up the second question I was going to ask you. So I see that you're playing. I see that you're. Yeah, I see that you're playing. To yeah, I see you're playing two sets tonight. So is that, is that because of twenty years? I mean, is. I mean, is it kind of an anniversary thing for you? Absolutely, it's an anniversary thing. Uh, but more than that, it's like a planetary alignment of, of several factors. Um, for years, we've been doing these. Uh, multi-band package tours you know where you got three four five six bands on the tour and uh, there was never enough time to play all the songs that our fans wanted to hear and it was heartbreaking like we'd look at a set list and have to go well what are we cutting out tonight 
what are we cutting out tonight? And uh, so we we had been like itching to find some way to play all these songs. So we came up with the idea, well, let's do two sets every night, which is kind of insane, uh, given the kind of music this is. Um, but it's what we want to do, because there is nothing pure. If your fans want to hear your songs, is that not why we are even here? Come on! Absolutely. There is no other reason to be here. Absolutely. So if your fans want to hear your songs, God damn it, you should play them. Right? Absolutely. I completely agree. Um, okay, so after touring for so many years, um, how, how do you manage to enjoy it? Like, Because I watch you on stage, and it seems like you're, like you're playing on stage for the first time. <laughs> I swear, I watch you, you know, you've always got a smile on your face. You seem so happy to be up there. How do you manage to do that after d playing huge shows and, you know, all over the world for 20 years? Well, I love metal and I love playing the guitar. Um, I live for it. Um, as long as there's not technical problems or douchebags working on the local crew, uh, the show will go okay. Uh, then... Everything's all right. I can do what I'm supposed to do, and God damn it, just let me do what it is I want to do without sticking a fucking cock in my ass while I'm on stage trying to do my motherfucking job, right? Exactly. As long as we don't have that going on, then, man, yeah, exactly. it's on. Right? It's on. Exactly. God damn it. I came here to play metal. Right? That's why I'm here. So let's go. Like a kid in, like a kid in my bedroom, right? Just play it. Exactly. Just play it. I live for it. Right. I live to play. Exactly. But I even love band practice. Man, I'm the first guy on the phone going, <laughs> come, come on, on, let's do let's, it. Let's practice. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Uh, let's practice. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so so where's your favorite place on the planet to play? Um, strangely enough, here in San Francisco is one of them. Uh, I am from here. Uh, oh, really? South San Francisco. Uh, my folks' house was right under Sign Hill, South City, the industrial oh, city. Really? Uh, yeah. Nice. So I'm a Bay Area boy. Um, but I moved away when I was a, a young teenager. Um, so there's always something special about coming here, playing in San Francisco. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so at the gates of Sethi, how successful is it? How's it doing? Well, it's been our highest charting record ever. Really? Ever in the history of the band, in multiple countries. So, if that is how one quantifies success, then okay, sure. Uh, it was not universally accepted or loved, though. A lot of critics hated it. Uh, people, there were people who hated the production, there were people who loved the production. Um, so yeah, it's kind of been a dividing line for uh, some of our, our fans because um, some of the production choices that we made, I'm pretty sure of. I, I noticed the production was different. What, was, what were the different things you did? Well, uh, nowadays, so many records are made that are just artificially inflated to sound big and fat and heavy with a lot of studio magic, a lot of Pro Tools, over-compressed records, and everything is, is squeezed so that it sounds loud and fat when you listen to it on something small, like an iPod or, or a computer. Well, I don't listen to music that way. I have a fucking stereo at home. <laughs> yeah, a big if, one. <laughs> if I want to fucking listen to Slayer, I put it on and it kicks my fucking ass. Right? <laughs> That's metal, okay? Exactly. That's metal. So... We wanted to make a record that sounded good when you fucking put it on. That actually sounds good, you know, the old-fashioned way records used to fucking be made. Yeah. You know, um, there's also a lot of issues uh, with high-speed extreme death metal. It's very hard to get it cleanly recorded so that what's coming out of the speakers is what you played and so that people can actually hear it. I've been so frustrated for years. A lot of the guitar playing 
and drumming was getting lost in the translation because it's just tough yeah. to you know get to hear good. So we made this decision. All right, you know what? We're gonna like strip it down and record it as rawly and cleanly as possible so people can actually hear what we're actually motherfucking playing. If you were sitting here in the room, it was just me, my fucking practice amp, and an acoustic drum kit, you could. the real thing. Like, take the Crisian guys, right? Fucking ultimately brutal uh, trio. You set them in a little room with just their fucking guitars. Those guys would agreed. fucking melt your fucking faces. Absolutely agree. Without any studio trickery necessary. Yep. So that's what we wanted to bring to people. Where I think I miscalculated was that uh, people are so listen used to listening to over-compressed, really bandwidth squeezed down uh, productions that they expect to hear that when you give them something yeah. raw clean and natural the way instruments actually sound they go what is this yeah i don't yeah. like this yeah I, I i agree with that um <laughs> bring me to my next question um so you guys you guys use marshals okay and there's i'm a marshall guy myself okay and there's so many bands out there that death metal bands that do not and it's such a not a death metal amp it's you know rock or thrash you know usually mm -hmm. um why the choice in marshall well, this is a, a multi-part answer uh with the marshall it's not necessarily a death metal amp what you put in is pretty much what you get out. Um, and that's the way we like to play. We, we like to actually play and actually, you know, hear it, you know, and the Marshall's very direct. Uh, having said that, um, while I am still using my Marshall cabinets, I have retired my Marshalls. I'm now using uh, a combination of the Engels Oh, okay. And, uh, the Splons. The Splon amps are like the best Marshall amps that... It's a modified like, Marshall. Basically, yeah. yeah. It's hot-rotted, tweaked, yeah. so it's just right. The kind of Marshall that got away. You know, that, that one yeah. amp that your buddy had that you wanted, <laughs> and he wouldn't right. sell it to you because it was so godly, and you played it, <laughs> right. and now every other Marshall amp that you play, it's... <laughs> just not, yeah, exactly. not, not quite, quite there. that awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Splon makes those amps nice. by hand. They're all hand-wired, point-to-point soldering. Nice. Um, made with loving care um, by Scott Spawn. They're in L.A., right? No, they're in um, uh, Dallas, North Carolina, which is about oh, really? an hour from where I live. Oh, wow. So I could just oh, drive wow. up there, and, <laughs> and they know me, work, and I, I hang done. out. Right. Yeah, hey, guys, <laughs> cool. can you build this for me? <laughs> But, uh, awesome. I'm also using the angle amps, um, which are, are incredible. Uh, I was on tour uh, earlier this year, uh, the Creator, Morbid Angel, Nile Tour, um, and I was using some rented marshals, uh, and the rental company had sent along, as a spare, didn't even charge us for it, an angle. Um, so basically it sat in the back of the truck for about six weeks and then one night one of my Marshall heads died yeah as Marshalls are wont to do yeah, yeah. you know they're like finely tuned race cars you know, yeah. they do break down yeah um, so there was no other choice well, I had to send Brovar our guitar tech to the truck bring in the angle all right yeah. Well, what's going to happen? Well, son of a bitch, I plugged it up and it was absolutely righteous. Uh, the most articulate musical tone I think I've ever heard. Wow. Out of a, you know, it's under the hood, there's a lot of Marshall in it. It's basically yeah. an EL34 amp, the, the one that I'm using. They're real barky. Um, they got a good bark to them. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, super freaking articulate. Yeah. Um, for high speed, you know, uh, death metal guitar i mean it catches all the notes yeah. um so I'm, now i'm using the angles it, it was such a eye-opening experience that uh 
I brought a Marshall head as a spare. <laughs> nice. And it's sitting on the truck. <laughs> nice. But, uh, and lastly, on this topic, um, the Engel guys and the Spawn guys, they returned my phone calls. The Marshall guys. Oh, they're a huge company. They uh, couldn't care less. Yeah, right. yeah you know. Exactly. Well, you got two small companies and you got a large company. There you go. Right? Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I'll write. Yeah. Um, let's see. What message would you, would you like for everyone, but just kind of the Bay Area people? What would you like to tell them before we get off the air here? Come to the show tonight, man. <laughs> we're going to give our all to the show. We've been playing two sets every night. The band is in, in fine form. I mean, we've been slaving our asses off on this tour. And tonight will be a night of metal. Nice. God damn right. 